I can't find one that has the missing elements in it, so I don't know how to destroy it. Backups weren't running? Yeah, they got to old. They don't have this stuff in them. That's weird, so they weren't running while she was working. Uh, I guess not the most recent. I don't know, I never have any of those backups in them, but they're always kept in the last time. Yeah. Do you know when, you know when that annoying box pops up, pops up and says, do you want to save or do you want to change intervals for saving the auto stuff? Yeah. Okay, so so ceilings ceilings are really straightforward. They're exactly like um, almost everything else that we've done, and in fact, they're even simpler than that. Uh, have you guys started talking through like a floor pack, the, the, the zone between the, the the floor itself and the ceiling and the level below in studio? Have you done any of that? So. So the floor pack, a lot like this false floor underneath us, right, carries all of the mechanical stuff that's in between. Um, mechanical, electrical, plumbing. In a tower, in a theater like this, it's much bigger than you might guess. How thick would you assume that floor pack would typically be in a building like this? Yeah, two and a half, three feet even is, is not uh, out of the realm of possibilities. These things can be very thin, right? And you don't really necessarily recognize it. At Center City Building, the floor pack is about three feet. At stores, do you have any sense of what the floor pack is? What's the construction type of stores? What's it made out of? What's the, what's the structural system? CNUs? Is it? No, it's not. It's a steel building. A steel building that's made to look like a concrete building. All of those CMU walls are just firewalls and separations, and they're wrapping around steel structure. Okay, all the columns in the salon, go walk through the salon and knock on the columns. Every other one is solid. It's a steel beam wrapped in concrete. And then the other ones are hollow. You can knock on them and they're fake. Okay, they're still pretty solid, but because you guys are tough on them. <laughs> the, uh, the, but the building, if you ever stick your head up in where there's some ceiling tiles, the building is a steel building with a, with a steel deck with a concrete floor on it, right? So it feels like it's a concrete building in every way until you stick your head into the, into the ceiling pack. That ceiling pack in stores is really big in a lot of spaces. Like in darts, it's like three and a half feet. There is a ton of room there. Some of that is because um, of the fake level. Some of it is because Bachmi was obsessed again with the eight inch module and he wanted that ceiling to line up perfectly with all of the other modules through the building, right? And he was willing to waste a bunch of volume just to do it. So uh, when you go to do ceilings, uh, really what you're thinking about is how much volume you're going to need to connect between those things. Um, the, the key thing that I would say about ceilings is just trying to find them, okay? Just trying to figure out and pay attention to what level you're on and how to see them, okay? And the two key ways to do that are using sections and using the section box in 3D. So the first thing we're going to do before we start drawing any ceilings is just to make a new view, make a new section cut. I'm just going to make a section cut through the building this direction. I'm sure you guys are, hopefully already have one. And then I'm also going to make a new 3D view. And in my 3D view, I'm going to come over here and in the properties box, there's a little box called section box. And if I check that, 
that little tiny box on my screen, you can see it brings up this box that sort of wraps the entire model. And I can take any of these edge arrows and pull them in. And you can see what it does. It literally cuts a section through, through the project. Hopefully you guys have already been using these. If not, yeah, I'm sorry, they probably would have been useful this weekend. Um, <laughs> the section box really makes it so much easier to be able to identify where, you're, where you've got a ceiling. So you can see I already put one in this room right here. This ceiling, you can see, is offset. It's based on the floor. It's based on the relationship to the floor below it, not to the floor above it. Okay, so you need to be thinking about your ceiling height Relative to the floor below, you can see in the properties dialog right here is defined as eight feet from the floor, okay? I think in the opera, in this space, I think you can presume that the floors are somewhat exposed uh, uh, underneath the, the sort of, well, they're probably gonna be tied to that railing that kind of comes down and it's gonna be all one move. So really the only spaces that we're concerned about doing conventional ceilings like this are all these office spaces and um, control rooms and so forth that are in the back, uh, the back of the space. Ceilings in those rooms, in spaces that are completely enclosed, are very straightforward. So if I go to orchestra level one, and I still have that other one selected. I'm just gonna go to architecture and ceiling. You can see there's two modes again. You can do automatic and you can do sketch mode. So in automatic ceilings, you can see by default, it sees closed boundaries here in each of the different environments. And if I click on one of those rooms, it's just gonna drop my ceiling in. Very straightforward. And I can kind of click through and define a bunch of these It's just telling me I can't see them here. You can see by default that it also made a bunch of ceiling plans for you as you were looking at, or as you were creating floor plates. So if I go to the ceiling plan on orchestra level one, I don't see anything. Why is that? What's that? Yeah, exactly. It's looking up, right? So if we go back to that 3D view, I was putting those down below here. So I can grab this section box and I can also pull on the top of it. And you can see when I get down here that there are ceilings on those spaces on the lower level that I put in uh, on orchestra level one. The other thing by default when I look at these, when I look at these ceilings is that just like with walls, just like with stairs and everything else, everything's based on these family types. What's a two by four ACT? What do you think an ACT is? Yeah, it's an acoustic ceiling tile, right? ACT is acoustic ceiling tile. It's that ceiling that you get in almost every kind of academic building. Uh, stores has them in all of the Crick rooms and all of the kind of smaller spaces um, intended to have more conversational types, right? You put in these acoustic ceiling tiles to basically keep it from being, from having too much uh, reverberation inside of the room. So an all concrete room without a ceiling tile system like the one in here would be much louder and much harder to kind of hear because the voices would echo across the room. Uh, those ACTs are also insulative and they're also fireproofing. Okay, so they're intended to slow down any fire that might be, say, up in the ceiling space from getting down into the space where people uh, are occupying, hopefully leaving pretty quickly. Uh, I would say to use, if I were you, uh, to use the two by two system through these smaller spaces. So you can see by default, when I come to the type here, I can choose a two foot by two foot ACT instead of the four foot. The only time you really see this is when you change the detail level over to fine. Let me pull a cut through here. And when I look up on these ceilings, you can see the four foot panel here. 
And if I switch it over to the two foot, you can see it becomes a more regular grid through those spaces. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. The harder part is gonna be doing some of the slope surfaces. So if I pull back out in my section box here, if I can get the top, So here in this model, you can see we've got these stepping boxes moving down. And what, we've, what we really want to end up with in this model is basically a profile that's got that kind of curved railing and have that sort of flow into the ceiling. So while the railing is going to be attached to the floor plates that you've drawn, kind of structural concrete floor plates, that we're going to have this kind of railing piece that's got this sort of curved, smooth surface to it. It's made out of wood. And that's going to flow into or get tied into the ceiling space below. Okay? And the, the sketch ceiling gets drawn in there. You're going to want to use this sketch ceiling, excuse me, sketched ceiling to actually control how that railing works. And both of those systems are going to be somewhat detached from the floor plates as they're stepping down. Because the floor plates, you're going to have to kind of even out. And when you look at the drawing section in, um, in the theater itself, we know we've got these boxes that are doing this. And our ceiling and railing is going to want to, that's probably kind of far off. Well, it might be like that. Our ceiling is going to smooth all that out and turns up across the face there. So when you look at that section drawing through the theater, all you see is that railing nice and smooth all the way along the length. It doesn't stair step with the boxes, right? It's got that smooth surface. So we can't really use the floor plates themselves to actually hold the railings, right? The railings need a host, is what we call it in Rabbit, right? And as you go to assign those, we're not going to be able to use the floor plates themselves. So this ceiling that we're going to draw in, it's going to, and we can't post it, but it's going to do all the math for us in terms of how we actually get that railing to align with it. And we're going to do it using the exact same things you've already been using, a sloped ceiling in this case. Okay? So let's look at how that might work. So here in 3D, I'm basically wanting to create a ceiling underneath this box level one that's going to slope just like some of the floors we were looking at last week. So I'm going to start on with the ceiling actually attached to the orchestra level. So that's the level that is below, right? And again, these ceilings are always associated with the floor that's below them, right? And they're offset from that floor back up. So the, the simplest way to go about this is to, we're going to start off just tracing along this edge that, that we're going to use. And we, we may have to go back and adjust it, but we'll start off with that. So I'm going to do a ceiling again. This time I'm going to switch it over to a sketch ceiling. And I'm going to draw it just like we were drawing some of those floor plates, okay? So I'm going to kind of, you can either use the pick lines and go through and actually define the relationships along here, or you can trace. And I think you guys are learning now that you have to be really deliberate about how you do these. What are they watching next door? Get the volume up so high. And you may have to get in here and actually do some of this kind of detailed selection.
So my goal here was just to try to get one in there to start with that I can see then in 3D. Because really, um, when you're looking at the um, when you're looking at box level one or box level, um, I can see what I'm sketching on here, and it looks like I'm way off. Um, the the idea here is just to get something base, and then I'm going to have to kind of flip back and forth between orchestra level where I'm drawing and box level one where I'm actually covering the underside of, right? Does that make sense? So uh, you might imagine box level one is above us. This is orchestra level. I need to draw this ceiling on orchestra level, but really the geometry is referencing box level. So what I was trying to do is just get a rough geometry based on the walls of orchestra level on the backside. And then I'm going to look from above at box level and see where the overhang is for the seating area that's cantilevered over it. Does that make sense? So here I've just clicked through and I can see now that my, that these last few arcs, I need to go back and change. Whoa. You could also do an overlay, but it comes through just like what I'm doing here. If you draw on orchestra one and then bounce up to box level one, you can see what you're drawing and adjust it to match. So I'm going to try and just get this closed off so I can. I'm just using trim extend here. TR, yeah. Thanks. Oh, there you go. If I got it, I did not get it. You see, there and there. Never on the first try. Okay, so that's just doing that kind of flat. I'm just getting a flat one we can start with. Uh, to use and then I'm going to come back out here to the to the 3d view so you can see what we've got and here you can see I've got this flat surface now that doesn't relate at all to the, the spaces below so the first step that I want to do is just to adjust what the bottom is going to be right so this we're going to make this this ceiling slope just like we were with the floors but I first need to get the height correctly set so you can see it's offset from orchestra at eight feet I'm going to take it up to 10 feet and see if I can get close here so that the slope will roughly match uh, what's going on uh, above it. And then I can come back into that orchestra level one and edit that boundary. And I'm going to put in a slope arrow just like I did with the, with the wall systems or with the floor systems, excuse me. So the slope arrow here is going to allow me to define from one side to the other the sloped condition of that ceiling piece. And again here, height at tail and height and level at head are going to basically define how that slope works. Now, what, what you're going to have to do here is basically bounce back and forth between that, excuse me, between that 3D view or the section and this level to actually figure out what you want for the height at each end of your arrow. So right now, I know that my at the head of my arrow, um, I want to leave it at zero. And at the tail, I want to go up. I think another foot is probably about right. 
So I'm just gonna hit check, see how that looks. I'm gonna pop back out to 3D. And I was close, but you can see here it goes up into that lowest level by just a little bit. So I'm gonna come back out, hit edit boundary. And I need to go back into that orchestra level and select the arrow in order to get the dialogue up. And I'm just gonna change this back down to like eight inches and see if that'll do it. Oh, got it pretty good there. So I think you're gonna you're gonna have to be really diligent about how you sort of trace those edges, especially because of the kind of curved acoustic walls that are that are following along that piece. But this does if the walls are all in relatively consistent spots, it does make it pretty straightforward. You just have to be really deliberate and you know trying to avoid that error that'll come up if you don't have a closed a closed surface moving all the way around. Uh, it's, you can kind of take some liberty as you go. You're going to need to make a flat spot. And you can see in the profile that I drew, I kind of stopped here in the corner. I stopped here in the corner because I'm presuming that I'm going to have kind of a flat zone of ceiling in the center. And then I'm going to have another sloped arrow mirrored on the other side. Um, once you've got one drawn, I would encourage you just to mirror that ceiling across and then draw the one in between that would be the flat one. That's at the level that, that's at the back of your arrow, uh, underneath the flat zone of the floor plate above. Does that make sense what I'm talking? Right in here. So take this guy, mirror it across, and then draw this as a flat piece in between. You're going to have to transition between the two, the two slope sides, and it just doesn't seem like when you look at that section, it looks as though there's actually a flat zone there in the back, and we know also that those um, those booths that are on this level are also flat, have a flat floor plate uh, around them. But you guys can kind of, if you want to draw that as one big horseshoe, you can do it uh, if you want. There's, I, I think it's really about getting it to look correct. Okay. So the next part of this that we want to work on is the, the railing part, okay? And this is going to be that much tougher. The key thing that you're going to want to remember there is we just made, we started that ceiling at 10 feet, and we went up 8 inches to the back, okay? And that math is going to be the exact same thing that you're going to have to do with the railing. And you're going to want these railings to be offset exactly the same so that they match up with the ceiling below. So if we look in elevation, the orchestra level is at 465, and the box level is at four, 465 to 478 and five inches. What is that, 13 feet, five inches. So the base level between those two things is 13 feet, five inches. And that, that math is gonna be what you're gonna have to pay attention to. So you're gonna start with this, is the difference between, and we're basically gonna try to define this corner for the railing to match the same profile that the ceiling is doing below it. So if you imagine the ceiling is right behind the back of the railing there, this slope we just said, if this is orchestra, this starts at 10 feet, and back here it goes to 10 feet eight. And there's some rules on this, and Ken, you guys can, can kind of take some liberty however you want in making this as simple as possible. But you are gonna have to do the math in order to get the offsets to be correct. So, the first part of that math is, where's the bottom of the railing? Right here. What's that height relative to orchestra, well, no, relative to box level? One. The difference between box level one and orchestra one is 13.5, and the ceiling is how far up of orchestra one? So what's the difference? Three feet, five inches. Okay. So this space right here, 
is going to be three feet, five inches. So this is key because the railing is attached to box level one. The ceiling that I want it to align with is attached to orchestra level one. So you gotta go through and do the math in order to get these two things to line up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, what is, like, how did you get the slope? Slope arrow. Well, yeah, but, like, how did you decide, like, what? All I did was just look at it in the 3D view just to make it as close to the bottom of the boxes as I could. We don't have anything else to go on, right? But how did you do that? Did you just adjust the that? Yes. Yeah, so I changed it from 8 feet as the base for the ceiling up to 10. And that's right there at the corner, and then I adjusted it so that it stayed basically flush with the bottom of those. And that's basically what you see in that section, the one section drawing we have. them to align right here in section, okay? Everybody get that? Okay, that's what we're working towards. And so I need to know where this point is relative to both levels, relative to both floor plates as I go. Because now we're gonna go in and we're gonna make a line for this railing to be attached to. The first thing we need to do is make a profile. So in that section, In this section here, you can see how this railing kind of comes down and wraps underneath into the ceiling. And that's what we're trying to get defined. And there are a few different ways we could do this, right? We could do it as one big railing. But the issue is, is that the railing the profile, as we go to draw them, is not going to want to adjust based on your wall edge. So the ceiling is really the best way to draw this, the underside of each of the floor plates. And then the railing as in another piece that's based on the profile geometry here that you can see is kind of this curved face off of each level. Does that make sense? So we're gonna do our first custom profile here. And all of these, a lot of the rest of the stuff we're gonna do for the rest of the semester is based on this kind of, this kind of move. So, in order to get into the, the, the kind of custom families, you basically want to go to the View tab. And this is honestly the best way <laughs> that I've found to get back out to it. Go to User Interface and hit Recent Files. It brings you back out to that opening, uh, opening window. And we're going to make a new family this time. And when you open up the new family types, if you're inside of Imperial, or English one, you should see on top here a series of base family types. These are basically families without anything drawn in them. They just have the reference levels inside of them that you can use to make new profiles that will then get extruded or swept along whatever geometry you use. Okay? So down here we've got a profile called profile rail. And that's our base one. Go ahead and open that up. It's our base one for doing railings. So if you scroll down below the profiles, um, railings, these are the defaults. Thank you. 
just looks a little different. Ciao. Thanks. So, family templates. Can everybody get one of these open? Canvas quick. Is everybody else? Is anybody else missing that? That profile template? Family templates here in English One? You guys all got them? All right, I'm going to throw it up on. If you guys don't have them, I'm going to throw it up on the canvas. Okay, it should be up there under files. So, so these profiles are always going to have just a couple of really simple things, and they're named appropriately. All they are are like a dumb stripped out conceptual mass with nothing in it except for some re some reference levels. The Revit's gonna use to locate that profile when you go to draw something specific with it. So this is a profile for a railing, okay? All it has is a center line. You can imagine that center line is gonna get attached to the floor edge uh, on, any, on any floor that you're gonna want to attach a rail to. And rail top is deceptive but rail top, the intersection of these two lines is basically where your wall is gonna be. So that's, or excuse me, that's where your floor, the corner of your floor is gonna be. It's this spot right here. And so whatever we draw in this profile is gonna get swept along your floor plate based on that point, okay? So we know, this is, this is part of the trouble. We know we're gonna draw a profile that goes up. How high is it gonna go up? Yeah, probably 36 inches. We know it's gonna go up that high and we know how far is it gonna go down? In order to hit our ceiling. Right, three feet, five inches. So this is gonna be a big, tall railing. It's gonna be like seven foot tall, right? Because we gotta go up this way from the floor and we're gonna drop back down to try to align with that ceiling plane that we made. Does that make sense? So the easiest way to do this is just to start drawing some lines I think it's easier to draw some straight lines to get your dimensions in. So I'm just drawing a three foot square shape going up, three inches across, and then six foot five inches down to basically get the rough heights drawn into this profile that we need in order to draw that railing. Okay, so I've gone three up, I've gone three inches out to give it a little thickness, and then I've gone three feet five inches down below that edge in, in order to get to the bottom. This is that new family template. So the, 
intersection of these two lines is that corner. It's this corner right here, right? It's the edge of your floor plate at any given spot. So we're gonna go up three feet and then back down six feet five in order to get to the ceiling down below it. So where it says rail top isn't gonna to be the top? It's not actually the top, right? So now go ahead and smooth it out. Give it a radius so that it matches, you know, roughly what that profile is that Lord Foster drew. So I'm just going to take and give this a kind of smooth, a smooth face across the front. I know that this is basically going down to a point here that's going to match the ceiling. So I'm going to come in three inches. Actually, let's look at that. See, it almost looks like it's kind of like, man, I mean, it's really hard to know, but it's kind of softly comes out and then makes a pretty tight radius at the end. So I'm going to come back and draw another little radius right here. And another one at the top. I'm just going to make it bow out a little bit more. So you get something like that. You're going to want a close profile. You can go back and change these. They're not fixed, right? You can start with this and then go back and adjust it, and it'll update the profile in the model. Does everybody understand what we're going to do here? We're taking this profile, and it's going to follow whatever lines we draw in the model, right? Or whatever edges we select in the model to align it with. So at this point, what you want to do is save the drawing. Save it as something that's useful in a place that's findable. Pay attention to where you're putting it. If you've got a folder, um, you want to keep track of these, uh, these different profiles and keep them associated with the, with, the main, uh, with the main model that you're working on. So I'm going to call this Opera Railing 1. I'm going to hit Save, and then I'm going to hit Load into Project. So it doesn't automatically kind of just because you're saving it, it doesn't automatically show up in your in your new model. It, since I didn't have any other models open, it immediately assumed I just want to put it into the model that I'm working on. But if you have other drawings or models open, it's going to prompt you asking you where you want to load that that family into. All right. Everybody OK? You want me to wait a second? Hello. Yes. Oh, you're good. 
All right, I'm going to go into box level one here and then start drawing with this with this guy just so you can get a sense of how it works. So under architecture, I'll go to railing. And I'm going to select here. You should have, well, excuse me, you should have a series of, I've already got an opera railing here. You won't have that. You should have a series of other default railings. Uh, bottom fill pipe, guardrail rectangular, handrail pipe, handrail rectangular. Do you guys see that under the family types? So we need to select one of those and redefine it using our new profile. So I'm going to take um, just glass panel bottom fill. And a lot like with wall types and everything else, you have to take one of the default ones, hit edit type, and duplicate it. So I'm going to duplicate this type and call it opera railing one and maybe this will help you sort of understand a little bit how these default systems work so here in Revit these are relatively complex railing types I'm looking at an elevation from the back here it has glazing it has a handrail it has other little crossbars and it has balusters that all are composed of different profiles just like the one we just drew, okay? All of those different parts are linked to this spreadsheet that you're looking at. So just like with a wall type, all of this information is basically defined as a, as a combination between a spreadsheet and a set of drawings, okay? And those drawings are simply 2D profiles. For this railing, it's just a bunch of circles and squares. Does that make sense? Those circles and squares are scaled to match pipe sizes and match steel sizes. But all of this is no different than just a really complex version of a, of, of a combination between a spreadsheet and a bunch of 2D drawings, telling it how to actually copy this system all the way across. So what you see is stuff like the rail structure, the ballast replacement, the landing height adjustment. All of these things are simply custom parameters that were defined for this railing system by somebody at Autodesk, okay? We're going to strip all that stuff out and just use our simple profile that's going to follow the railing type or follow the floors around the room, okay? So I'm going to go in and, well, this one is important. The top rail height actually is our reference point that we're looking at to reference that, the level that we've got inside of ours, but almost everything else in here we can start to remove. So what we want to do is come in here. Let's let's start by actually. Are you have you guys got? Um, let's look at a 3D view so we can kind of see the changes that we're moving. So if you don't, if you haven't already, hit the preview button down here so you can see off to the side what's going on, and you can see all of the different pieces of this model as we're going through it. First thing I'm going to do is hit the baluster button and you can see again we dive in one level more and we're looking at um, we're looking at the spreadsheet that's defining all of the different profiles. So you can see here the different offsets and different movements. These are all going to be based on those reference planes that we looked at in the profile. So what I want to do is actually remove some of this. So I'm going to hit delete and as I do I'm just going to hit OK and you can see what starts to happen. So I just removed the two balusters that were on each side of the plane, the, the glazing plane. And if I hit this other one, these are going to be the other two that are defining the outside boundary of what we've got. Um, down here, this is down here, the, the balusters that, that are linked to it, we can go through and switch these over to none the profiles that are associated with them and then I'll hit OK again and you can see now the balusters are completely gone and we didn't want any balusters frankly anyway all we want are these profile is one profile that's going to be moving across uh, through the um, uh, through the railing or as the railing so now what I can do is come in here to the top rail type and I'm going to hit none for that and I'll hit OK. Oops, I didn't mean to hit OK. Hit edit type and you can see that that top rail is now gone. 
Up here under rail structure, we can see those last two pieces that are left, which are these two rails that are moving across. I'm going to, again, remove one of them. And then I'm going to go to the profile here. And under that profile, I should be able to find the profile that I drew, Opera Railing 1, under this, under this piece. And I'm going to hit Apply. And you can see here what I've created, which is that profile that we drew extruded straight along through the, through the railing. I'm going to hit the dot, dot, dot on the material here and go ahead and associate some wood planking. I think down here we can go to oak. Let's just use this oak flooring as a good starting spot for the material of this guy. And you can see I've got this horizontal pattern, much like what you see in the drawings. So, so really briefly, I'm just going to show you, you know, as you start placing these, uh, like with everything else, you can go through and actually select edges that you, want to act, you, that you want to attach them to. So I can either trace along on a floor plate here. That's not what we're going to want to do, but I'm going to have to kind of come back and, um, and show you guys how to actually get it so that it's following that ceiling plane. So I'll, I'll record a little video just to finish this up. But by default, what you can do is simply trace along your floor plate. And I just want to show in 3D what this looks like. So you can see I associated it down here with orchestra level, with the orchestra level not with the um not with the box level so i need to go to box level and i'm just going to paste it uh, i'm just going to draw another one on box level ah.
And you can see here by default, it's going to start snapping to certain heights relative to the box level itself. And you're going to have to go through and actually, I mean, we're not going to end up drawing these this way. We're going to use a line that follows that ceiling line in order to get this to snap cleanly to it. But in a traditional sense, or as you're looking at the railings out in the lobby space, you can actually just associate them really and let them be hosted simply by the floor plate that they're on. So you're going to draw the profile, which is a line that follows the floor. And then the height itself is going to be relative to the box level that you've actually defined, the level one that is the floor plate. So for instance, here, I need to offset this down. It looks like maybe minus four feet, five inches to start. I got a couple of them in there. So that it starts to look something like this. You can see by default it's facing the wrong direction, but there's two little tiny arrows in the center of the, the railing that I drew that I can click to flip it back out. So this is approximately what we're gonna do. I'm gonna record a little video just to show you how to draw the profile that's custom that will help to follow the, the ceiling. Um, but, and I'll also post this video so that you guys can go back through and do those profiles. Okay, you guys gotta get out of here. Okay, class, so we wrapped up um, by looking at the railing profile that we've done extruded simply along, simply as an attachment to the floor plate that, um, that we're using uh, here in the model. You can see that the, the depth difference here, we're gonna have to adjust our math based on the height of the ceiling relative to these floor plates. Um, well, or and or we're going to need to adjust the height of the ceiling itself in order to accommodate some of the depth um, that's in here. I'm actually going to drop the ceiling of the um, of the orchestra back down to eight feet so you can see the alignment that we had originally talked about um, working a little bit better. But again, this profile is attached to a, a linear floor plate behind it and not to the sloped floor of the ceiling that or the sloped level of the ceiling that's um, that we're trying to actually connect it to. So what we need to do is get a line that's actually following this profile of the ceiling that we can use as an attachment for our railings. I'm gonna delete this one and come back in to create another railing. Uh, and this time I'm going to, this time I'm going to actually draw a line. Uh, again, this is gonna be up on box level one and I'm gonna trace that ceiling plane that we, uh, that we started to follow uh, earlier, or that we drew earlier uh, on in the tutorial. So I'm just gonna, for this example, start with an arc. You may wanna go back, you will wanna go back and, and kind of match this up more cleanly. Uh, although this isn't probably too bad of an overlap, as long as it doesn't stick through, there's gonna be some uh, sloppiness like this. Uh, then what I want to do in order to get the slope working on this line, what I need to do is actually come in here and draw a little endpoint, something that's going to kind of stick out and give me a reference that I can use. Because we can't use the arrows the same way that we did uh, in a sloped ceiling or a sloped floor. We actually are going to want to go ahead and use, um, we, or we need to use a little bit of a line here that we can define to be, um, to be at a custom height. And so what I'm gonna do is grab this, this line and hit custom. And I'm gonna go in here and define that, um, the, the height of this to be, this is from box level one. I'm gonna start off first as going to minus three feet, five inches as we talked about. And we'll have to go back and kind of see if that works okay. Um, so that, that line is going to kind of drop down. And then the next part of this is to take this line, the, the one that we actually want the profile to follow, and we're going to define it here as being sloped. And so what it's going to do is it's going to maintain the connection to that little line that we offset down. Uh, and that's going to define this level to be lower than box level one. And when I hit the checkbox, I'm going to get another error as I had, but if I pop back out into 3d, where did I draw it? Oh, 
Oh, it's way down here. So for some reason, it was connected to base level instead of box level. So if we bring it up to box level, here you can see now that sloped version. And you can also see the problems with my line, uh, at least in the way that this line is working so far. So um, here it's coming up to box level. Um, so we need to offset the, the base from box level to get down to here as a starting point. And then our slope, you might remember, across that whole edge was only 8 inches. So I'm going to go back and um, first adjust the difference in the level for that little line that's giving, our pro giving us our profile um, at the edge. So I'm going to edit the path and select this line again and change this just to be minus 4 inches um, as the slope uh, is is really quite minimal in that line that we've drawn and I, I was thinking of the entire offset being based on that line so now we'll go back into 3d and we'll actually do the offset to get down as three feet minus three feet five inches and what you can see now is that we're getting the slope to work basically to match the ceiling uh, what I didn't accommodate for is the thickness of the floor plate. So we're going to go do minus 4 feet, 5 inches. And it's still not quite there. And the slope appears to be a little bit off still. So I think what you're going to have to do, this, this slope at this end appears to be just right. Um, but here at the other end, it appears to have gone too far. And that has to do with the fact that the flo the ceiling that I drew comes all the way back here. It's sloping eight inches all the way along here. And I'm only, I've only so far drawn just this little piece of the railing. So I'm going to go back in and edit the path again, go to box level, select this little line again, and I'm going to change this to 2.5 inches, roughly a third of the slope of the entire um, other piece pop back out in 3d and that appears to be pretty good in terms of the profile all the way around I need to adjust the endpoint of my curve over here so that it lines up with the ceiling below it so I'll hit the edit path once more and I'm just gonna drag this end out just a little bit Let's take a look at that again. Still not quite enough. I'm trying to adjust that radius a little. Looks like I could actually extend this out to here. Might get the slope working a little better. I think you're just gonna have to move back and forth between 2D and 3D to try to get these working. It actually appears as though the ceiling is the problem here. Um, so I can go back in and adjust the ceiling profile on orchestra level, which comes out too far. I think I'm just going to delete this segment and draw a new one. Let's see how that looks. There we go. I've got my profile basically mimicking along there. I can adjust this little piece that's here at the end so it doesn't um, go back to box level. Thank you. 
And you can see once I've got that level set that I can delete that little piece that I'm using to define the, the relative height of the piece. Oh, I did lose the slope. Let's take a look at that again. So it looks like I do need that piece in order to keep the slope defined. So what I'm going to do is just um, undo and I'm just going to make this turn the corner across the face there and make it as small as I can. Does look like I need to adjust the base height again to get this back up. Again, just trying to parallel the height of the uh, of the ceiling below it, uh, and because my length isn't quite as long, um, I need to I need to kind of play with it as I go to keep it roughly uh, parallel to that ceiling plane. Moving along through the model. And if I switch it over to shaded here, it looks like I can still move that piece again. So I'm just going to keep bouncing back and forth here in 2D and 3D. Select, oh, that guy got uh, turned off. That would explain it. Let's go with three inches this time. Oh, I need to go with minus three inches. Probably got turned off when I deleted it and didn't get brought back. And it looks as though maybe the slope also got switched. That seems right. need to put the minus out in front um, so you can use this profile then to uh, adjust along the way you're probably going to want to um, do your best to match up as you can kind of see from this example to match up with the ceiling as you've defined it all the way around uh, on the panels um, that you do okay good luck